Mixing with Mike Plugin of the Week is the Plugin Alliance BX Console G. This is uh, now the sister console to the BX Console E. Uh, this was released by SSL in the mid 80s, I believe 1986. The E series console was released in 1978. The primary revisions, uh, and there were many that went throughout different parts of the console, but the primary re revision, and the one that you'll see um, that has most notably the different sound, is the EQ section. Um, and uh, what uh, they've done here is they've added in two EQ types that were uh, the orange knob and uh, the original, which is the pink knob. Uh, version of the EQ. We'll get into that in a second, uh, but let's just kind of do a quick overview of the channel strip uh, and then uh, we'll get into some of the differences and particularly go over the four EQs just to kind of show you what the primary difference is. So uh, what you see here uh, at the very top of the channel strip, we have the uh, high pass, low pass filters and uh, essentially what ends up happening uh, here with these, they just actually uh, would, in, on the real console, click into an out position. You could just kind of flip them in and out this way by clicking on them or double clicking on the knob uh, that will switch it in or out. What they've added here, in addition to the normal features, which is just a sweep from 16 up to 350 and uh, 22 down to 3K, is times three and divide by three switches that extends that range so that they basically just about cross over each other uh, somewhere around 3K, a little over 3K or so. Uh, 1K, I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, so that's all pretty straightforward. You could feed this into the dynamic sidechain. So this will put it into the dynamic section sidechain if you decide you need to filter anything going into it. Um, there's a compressor section and an expander gate section. So we'll just take a quick look at that. So uh, we have a uh, simple compression ratio uh, release, fast and slow attack. The fast attack is somewhere around three milliseconds. Slow attack is somewhere around 30 milliseconds. That's sort of a standard. I don't think it's exactly that. I think it changes a bit with program material, but more or less that's what it is. Um, and uh, threshold, and you have a mix control, wet dry mix control. So this was not part of the original. Uh, they've also uh, added in a secondary release control. So this will give a secondary stage release to uh, kind of control pumping and breathing artifacts if you're using heavy compression. Again, you got the parallel mix, that's not part of the original. So the original only had three knobs. And then you have a high pass filter that feeds into the side chain of the compressor. So uh, this will free up this so that you don't need to use your high pass, low pass filters. Uh, into the dynamic sidechain, but this will work only for the compressor. So this is specific to the compressor to keep low frequency energy uh, from over triggering or making it not as reactive. Part of what makes the SSL compressor so amazing, and it, essentially it's like a DBX, a VCA style compressor, um, is, uh, is how active and aggressive it is. And so we'll get into that with some of the sound here. Um, in the expander gate section, you can make a, a gate here. Uh, they've added in a hysteresis control. Again, this didn't uh, um, exist in the original console. The primary difference uh, with the hysteresis controller, what it does is it sets a differential between the open threshold and the closed threshold. Uh, so if you look at most modern um, uh, compressors, uh, digital compressors that have an open and a closed threshold, so that actually just makes the gating a bit smoother. Uh, range control, uh, pretty straightforward and uh, release control. So in expand mode, it's like a one to two uh, inverted ratio. Uh, otherwise in, in gate, it will just kind of drop down. Uh, you have the ability to go E or G characteristics. So just like on the E channel strip, which defaults to the E setting, you can actually do this and I'll show you how this sounds a little bit differently uh, than uh, how they sound uh, subtly different from each other. There's a dynamic section um, here, which puts the whole dynamics in and out. Now that's actually true to the original. So if you put the dynamic section in, it would put the gate and the compressor circuitry in, whether you're using one or the other, you know. And this would allow for an external key. What's very cool about what they've done here, and it's the only one that I know of um, that allows you to key externally inside the channel strip. And this is something that actually you could do on the actual console itself. You could actually just either by patch or routing with buses inside the console, you could actually feed the side chain of any compressor in any channel throughout the console. So that's uh, an actual real option that a lot of uh, manufacturers don't put in. So I applaud Brainworks for adding that in. Um, the EQ, now uh, this is the pink knob EQ. This is the original release of it. And it was kind of an interesting thing. 
Um, and there's a whole story that kind of goes behind the different EQ versions. There were fundamentally four different SSL EQ versions that came in um, with the uh, um, with the consoles. And if so, if I open up here, uh, I'm just going to open up a, an E channel just so you can kind of see it. So on the E channel strip, what we have here are the two main EQ types: is the brown knob and the black knob. So the brown knob was the original version. Uh, and it had a smoother, probably more musical sound, I guess is the way I would characterize it. And the black knob was a version that uh, provided a more aggressive sound. And this was uh, um, applied or added in later versions of the console. Now, in between those two versions, and far lesser known and a little bit more rare, was an orange EQ. And so the orange uh, knob EQ had an orange knob on, on the low frequency and what it was meant to do was it was meant to emulate the characteristic shapes of a Pultec EQ. So it's not going to sound anything like a Pultec EQ. So don't don't think that it's an emulation of a Pultec EQ, but it maintained those kind of characteristics. But this was actually originally released during the E-Series time after the brown knob and before the black knob. So they had this orange knob version. And then there was the release that was part of the G-Series release, and this was the pink knob. Now, the pink knob had some significant changes. So if you go to the other EQ types, you would have a shelf bell switch on the top. And what they did was they replaced that with a times three divide by three switch. And uh, where this came from was a, there was a very popular EQ that came out in the 80s that was designed by Rupert Neve, and it was a focus right EQ, so the ISA um, series. And he released these EQs. They were originally rack mounted. They were designed to actually be components that you could put inside a Neve uh, 8000 series uh, console to replace existing components. And uh, it was really amazing. And all the studios, in, you know, quickly started buying them up. And uh, that led Rupert to design a full console. But what it had on it was a times three switch on the uh, frequency, uh, uh, high mid frequency, low mid frequency. So this would allow for an extended range of frequencies. And uh, SSL liked the idea, so they emulated that idea and they added in the times three divide by three switches. Now, what that did is it made the high frequency and low frequency knobs permanent shelves. And when this was originally released, it pissed a lot of people off. So what this means is that you have to kind of have a different strategy working with the G series in terms of the way that you work. It has like a, a more aggressive sound. One of the primary differences between it is that if you use the black series knob EQ or the brown series knob EQ, when you actually boost, the bandwidth relatively stays the same. So in other words, it, it doesn't narrow, it doesn't widen. Uh, so if you kind of think of like two anchors at the bottom of the bell that are near the uh, zero point, the zero dB point, uh, those would fundamentally stay fixed regardless of how much you boost or attenuate it. Um, whereas with the G-Series EQ, what would happen is the actual slope of the bell curve would remain the same. So as you boosted, those anchors down at the bottom near the zero crossing would actually start to widen the more that you boosted or attenuated. So the curve would actually get wider or narrower. And so in some ways it made it a more aggressive EQ. But um, one of the other things that it did is that as you start to uh, attenuate or boost more, even narrow Q settings, if you're trying to notch something out, it wasn't. It became less effective as a result. This had mixed reviews. What was interesting is that um, for me, I remember when this EQ came out, and it seemed to be more of a 50-50 kind of split between people who like this. And so divided was this that many of the G Series consoles got released with black knob uh, EQs, and this was an actually an easy, very easy modification because it was on a separate card that would fit into a slot and with one screw would hold it to the motherboard. So you, and then all you had to do is just change the color caps on the top and replace the times three divide by three switches with bell curves. So many studios would put half the console with GEQs, half the console with E-Series EQs, and then you could just kind of mix and match and move your channels around depending upon what you wanted best. Okay, so sorry for that long explanation, but I think it's important to kind of understand this because if you're deciding between an E or a G console, they do definitely have different characteristic sounds. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that here very shortly. Uh, one of the other remaining elements here is you have input gain, you have the V gain. So what this does is it brings up the electronic noise. So you can bring this up at defaults to minus 95 
or somewhere around there, and uh, and you can add that or just turn it off and kind of take it away if you want that analog noise or not. And then there's also a total harmonic distortion. This would be the equivalent of sort of driving more gain into the structure to bring in a little bit more harmonic distortion. So this actually is is really cool. It kind of defaults to setting of like you know minus 60 or something. Uh, and then when you turn it all the way up, it goes to like minus 30. So um, whatever those numbers mean, uh, you get a little bit more edge. So it's not like a pure heavy distortion overdrive type of thing, but it definitely will give you more edge. Phase avert and uh, mute, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then you have the TMT technology. So what this does is it actually uh, allows you to select different channel strips, if you like, uh, for each channel. And then it also has the ability to add the random channel in. Okay, so all of this done, I think I basically covered anything. We got the metering here. It can show input or output level. So you can display that here. You see the expander here and the compression uh, gain reduction displayed here in these LEDs. So that's exactly like the original. Uh, there's one other thing that I forgot, which is there's a minus 30 switch on the thresholds for the gate. So it'll actually extend the range down further uh, than does the original. Uh, other than that, I think we're good to go. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I, I kind of set this up, and originally, like I normally do, is, uh, I will do a review of the channel strip, and then I'll go in and it'll EQ a bunch of stuff. And I realized that I wanted to really compare this to the E-series channel strip, and so uh, rather than do that, what I did was I just kind of put together a mix of both, so at least I could somewhat balance the two sets of sounds so you could kind of get a bit of a fair comparison. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with just uh, the raw sound here, um, just so you can kind of hear it. So this is bypassed, so uh, there's uh, essentially uh, no console channel strip, so this is just kind of a raw mix. Every time I sit next to you, oh, I begin to tremble. And then, uh, and then in the previous review, I did um, a mix with the E console. I did some tweaks on it to kind of rebalance it a little bit. Sometimes it gets uh, a little bit wild <laughs> and trying to scramble through, you know, EQing or, or processing a whole mix in 20 minutes. But here we go. All right, so that's the E channel. Now we're going to do the G channel. Now with the G channel, uh, primarily, I think almost everywhere except for uh, one location here, I use the R and GQ, but I'll kind of go over that. But this is primarily all going to be the pink knob EQ, not the orange knob EQ. Here we go. Every time I sit next to you, oh, I begin to tremble. up to me. 
what you hear, what you'll notice in the difference here, and, and one thing I want to point out here is that I did not go in and match up the EQ settings. And part of the problem with doing something like this is that if I go ahead, for example, like I'll just show you here, for example, a guitar and the same guitar uh, here. So you notice that and it's interesting because on the E-Series channel, the guitars sound brighter, but I'm actually boosting at a lower frequency and not adding any top end. And here on the G, they sound warmer and richer, um, but I'm not uh, tamping down the top with a with a low pass filter and I'm boosting at a higher frequency here than I am on the E series. So there there is an interesting characteristic element here. You also notice that I'm boosting a whole lot more on the bottom and the low end of the guitar here and less so on the G series. So one of the things that uh is kind of inherent and the sound of the G series is a more aggressive mid range, and I think a bit more of a solid low mid that uh, kind of cuts through more cleanly with, than it does on the E series console. The E series console has a little bit more of a natural sound. The G series, to me, always had more of an aggressive sound. Now, the primary EQs I used for most on the E series were with the black knob, which is a more aggressive. Uh, of the two EQs than the brown knob. And I think I had some occasional brown knobs, I think like on the lead vocal, I believe I had, uh, nope, I had a black knob on the on the vocal EQ as well. So, so the comparisons and the equalizations are not exactly the same. And this makes it difficult to kind of run a comparison. And this is why I tried to kind of do a level match here just to kind of explain a little bit of this, um, just to show you, you know, give you more or less an idea. But uh, what you'll find is that there are some things that work really, really well with the E series, some things that work really, really well with the G series, and then you just kind of have to match it out. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of things here in terms of the way that the EQ works, just so you can understand a little bit of the pink knob and kind of approaching the, uh, the way that you would approach it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, paste it into here, just so we can kind of get back to it real quick. And I want to show you something that I did with the kick drum EQ. Um, so... The way that you work the divide by three switch and times three switches, uh, I can demonstrate uh, very clearly right here. So I'm just going to zero out some of these things. So if I take this divide by three switch and I set this to uh, um, point, uh, 0.2, which is 200 hertz, you end up with 67 hertz. So the cool thing about this is that um, when you actually click on the knob, you see the divide three kind of added in there. And what's really cool, if you use this with a narrow EQ, you can really get this kind of thunderous low end. Now, normally what you would do here if I were working on an E-Series EQ is I would balance this out. I would use the bell curve there and uh, and find you know a low frequency, kind of hone in on it, but you're at a fixed Q, which is not very narrow or very focused, uh, especially on the low end. But what you can do here is we can kind of I can kind of take this and I can pull back or shelve down uh, the low mids. So effectively what that does is it kind of cuts all of the low frequencies in general to kind of get rid of a, uh, a little bit of the um, the beach ball part of sound of the kick drum, which is usually somewhere in the 200 range. Right. And so I can keep a little bit of that and now I can go in and find like a nice uh, boost EQ on the top end. There we go. And so having a strategy like this ends up uh, being, you know, a cool way of working with it. The, the times three switch is is something that um, you can work, and this can kind of work really well with vocals. Um, so if, if we take something here, let me just uh, copy this, paste this into uh, a second channel here, and then... So you can see what I have here is I have a high frequency shelf and I have it boosted up here like almost 15K. So if I, uh, I take this out here for a second and I put the times three switch 
if I boost this up here, I can that becomes 21k. So I can do something along the lines of a. Um, of, Every time stand next. Uh, hold on, these guys are grouped together. Let me just solve. Every them. time stand next to you, oh, I begin to tremble and shake. So I could really bring that air up there and then widen the bell to extend it Every down. Every time stand next to you, oh, I begin to tremble and shake. So, and also the thing about the uh, the GEQ is that the amount of boost and attenuation, if you go back to the brown knob, it's plus minus 15. If you go to the black knob, it's plus minus 18. And then if you go to the pink knob and it goes plus minus uh, 20 or 22. <laughs> when you start really cranking it in. Every but, time stand next to you, oh, I begin to tremble and shake. And so you can get that real air way, way up on the top. And that's like a cool use of that on the times three or a way to kind of manage that. Every time stand next to you, oh, I begin to tremble and shake. It needs a little bit of de which is just a little bit inherent in the sound. I'm not going to get into that. Although you can actually feed this EQ into the sidechain, boost the crap out of the S's, filter off everything else, feed that into the sidechain, and actually use this as a de -esser. Uh, this is like if you didn't have any other de-esser plugin in the world, but we used to do that actually on the console if we didn't have like a, a DBX902 or something like that, a higher quality analog uh, de as an outboard piece. Um, but those are just a couple of quick examples of how you might do something. So, and one other thing here, uh, which I'm going to do here, is go through uh, just the uh, EQ. Oh, I just wanted to show you the orange uh, knob. A good version, uh, a place to use this is uh, on something like a bass or even like a vocal. Uh, has a little bit of a cleaner. Uh, mellower kind of sound to it. And... So I'm just bringing in a lot of growl. I'm also bringing in, this is like harmonic distortion here. So you can do that, get that real grit in the sound. And yes, it, it is actually okay to go and boost like 15 dB uh, at a particular frequency and then just balance the output here. Um, it actually works amazingly well. It's kind of part of, of the way that these EQs kind of work. But this just generally works on a, on a shelf uh, bell kind of basis, kind of just like the black knob and the brown knob. Uh, and otherwise it has, um, it's just the, the actual, the way that the cues are, are kind of shaped is, is very much the way that uh, the Poltec does it. So that's it on that. One final thing that I didn't do here, these are all uh, currently assigned to channel one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing. So I was comparing this to the E console, which was on with all the depth in. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change all of them uh, and uh, hit okay. And now- Every time stand next to you, oh, I begin to tremble and shake. Every time stand next to you, oh, So that opens up the depth uh, characteristic as well by giving each channel strip a uh, different channel. So the TMT technology, essentially what that does is tolerance modeling technology. So it uh, models the variance in each component, all the resistors and capacitors, and then uh, it sort of randomizes it so that every channel strip ends up being different from every other. And that's like times like 150 uh, caps and resistors, in, you know, um, inside uh, each channel strip. So that tolerance uh, creates the variation in sound that's a big part of analog technology uh, and the analog sound. So uh, it's very, very cool on that end. One last thing that I want to show you is the difference between the E and the G um, um, 
uh, set up here. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my uh, very dangerous group. So what this will do is this will, um, I have all the settings linked. So if I changed uh, something um, important, it would change it across all the channels. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to change E to G so you can hear the difference between an E compression versus G compression. So you can hear how the E is a bit warmer overall in the dynamics. The G is a bit more aggressive, and that's a general uh, um, that's a general vibe or sound of the G series versus the E series console. Anyway, um, this is this is an amazing one. I think what you'll end up finding is that you're going to want to end up having the E and the G uh, side by side, and then you can kind of mix and match, and then you can work with E or G compressors, and it would give you basically all uh, four EQ types to work with, uh, and then you can work them in uh, combinations. Uh, just know that if you do this uh, and you do the random channel, uh, you'll have to do it for the E and for the G separately because they won't coordinate in that way. But other than that, um, you should be good to go. This is a really cool. Very excited about this one. The G series console was one of my favorite consoles. Um, I started out learning on E. I, I did a lot of work on the G series all the way into the J and K series consoles, which I also love. And those sound extremely different uh, from the E and the G uh, by far. But uh, this is a very cool one. Another great uh, plugin emulation uh, by the Plugin Alliance BX Console G. It is the uh, plugin of the week.